Hey, Lord of Life. My name is Amy Pike, and I'm the owner of the Animal Behavior Wellness Center in Fairfax, Virginia. I am a member of the Clifton campus um, and have been since we moved here about four years ago. Uh, my husband is Tom Pike. He's active duty Army, and so we've lived kind of all over the country. Um, my creativity comes out as my passion for um, animals and um, their well-being, especially their behavioral and mental well-being. So um, I do believe in signs from God that God will show us the way that we should take with our lives and our careers if we only let him um, speak to us. So um, my career is kind of a varied one. I um, have been wanted to be a veterinarian since I was a little girl. I was one of those that collected lizards and um, and things from the backyard. When my dad ordered crawfish um, every year for our family crawfish boil, I would keep a few as a pet. Um, so I'm definitely one of those ones that from a tiny age wanted to be a vet. But I never really understood what I wanted to do within veterinary medicine because the field is so varied um, until I met my husband. Um, like I said, my husband is Tom and he is active duty. I met him the summer before I went to veterinary school. And at the time he was going into the army and I thought to myself, how am I going to make this work? Um, cause I really like this guy, but he's going to travel all over the world potentially. And so what can I do that can, um, align with, um, his career. So I actually looked into being an army veterinarian and fell in love with the field. Um, I did go active duty right after veterinary school and I was stationed at Fort Huachuca, which is a very tiny town, um, kind of on the Arizona, Mexico border. At the time, um, this was 2003, and so we had kind of the first deployment of our military working dogs to Iraq, and many of these dogs came back having been involved in roadside bombs or incidences, and that's really where I delved into behavioral medicine. But the other thing that happened um, that really sparked my career is we had a military working dog there named Pike. Um, ironically enough, we shared the same name, so of course I bonded pretty heavily with this dog. And unfortunately, the dog was killed by um, one of the dog trainers um, using some pretty harsh training methods. And I knew at that moment that there had to be a better way um, to train. And so I really delved into behavior medicine. Um, again, I was following my husband. I got off of active duty. Uh, we moved to the DC area for about a year uh, where I worked in um, at Andrews Air Force Base, taking care of the dogs for um, uh, that got on Air Force One. And then we moved to St. Louis and I was uh, still wanting to pursue behavior as a specialty and did a, ended up doing a residency there um, under my mentor, Debbie Horowitz who has definitely shaped my career. Um, and I've learned through um, dog training and through you know training all kinds of animals that you don't have to hurt them, you don't have to punish them um, in order to get behaviors that you want from them. And so just like um, some of my colleagues actually train, um, you know, dolphins and killer whales at SeaWorld, they can get those behaviors without force and without punishment. And it's all about rewards-based training. So uh, my career took, took us here, well, Tom's career rather, took us here to um, the DC area again. And um, we ended up at Lord of Life because it was just down the road. And interestingly enough, um, again, I think those signs from God. Um, Nathan and I ended up going to high school together, uh, come to find out, in Tucson, uh, where both of us grew up. So, um, and Tom's twin brother, who's also a Lutheran pastor, um, and Nathan were in the same uh, seminary class. So, just how things interestingly end up. I never anticipated owning my own uh, practice, but um, like I said, now I'm the owner of the Animal Behavior Wellness Center in Fairfax, Virginia, where we help all kinds of animals, dogs, cats, birds, um, pigs, horses, all kinds of things, um, learn uh, that the world is not so scary. So we treat animals with aggression, animals with anxiety disorders, etc., and we use all humane, non-forceful training methods in order to teach them. So I'm going to show you a few of the things that we do. Um, it's not all about uh, training in terms of like cueing an animal to do something. It's allowing them to work within their comfort level. Um, and you really can train 
any animal. So the first animal that I'm going to show you um, that we have trained is actually my cat. Um, this is uh, my cat Dobby, who's named after the character in Harry Potter, and my daughter Alexa, showing you how she has cha uh, trained her cat to do a fist bump. Nice. Oh, she got a jackpot. So one thing I wanted to explain to you of something that you saw in that video was that we train using a clicker. So a clicker is just a marker um, to indicate to the animal that that is the behavior that we wanted from you and a reward is forthcoming. So it basically acts like a camera taking a picture of the behavior for the animal. Animals, especially um, our pets, are extremely in the moment. And if we don't indicate the immediate behavior that we're trying to reward, by the time we get our treats out and give them their treat, they've already moved well past um, beyond what they've actually done. So if let's say you wanted to uh, teach your dog to sit, the moment that their little tush hits the ground, you click, and then you give them the treat. So again, just a camera indicating to the pet that that is the behavior that we're about to reward. I mentioned SeaWorld trainers um, earlier. Many of you, I'm sure, have been to shows like that where you've heard the trainers give a whistle, and the whistle is just the marker. So you can use anything, um, a marker word like yes, um, the clicker. Some of my colleagues do a mouth click. Um, I'm not very good at it, so I don't do that. tend to do that unless I don't have enough hands for my clicker. Um, but that's clicker training. And so that's just giving the animal more information about what it is that we're actually wanting from them. <laughs> Get out of my pocket, silly goose. Kitty. <laughs> Can you do that again? <laughs> you want to roll over? Okay, you can roll over. Good boy. <laughs> You're silly. Touch. Touch. Here, go. You know the treats are coming. Go. Okay. Ten. Give me ten. Give me ten. So you might ask yourself, what is a board certified veterinary behaviorist, which is what I am. Um, and I equate it to being like a psychiatrist for pets. So I'm first and foremost a medical doctor and went to veterinary school um, so I can diagnose and treat anything just disease wise in our animals as well as prescribe psychotropic medication. So literally everything that they use in human psychiatry now, Prozac, Zoloft, you name it, we use it in our veterinary patients as well to alleviate um, anxiety and fear. So this is Ike, this is one of my dogs, and this is more typical of one of my patients. Um, so Ike has some pretty serious handling issues. He does not like to be handled um, for veterinary procedures. So Dobby and Scooby you saw were just doing tricks. Ike is doing what we call husbandry behaviors, where he needs to actually have things performed to him. So this is Ike's mat, and Ike's what we call start button behavior is if he is willing to participate, he comes to the mat. And so he is telling me that he is a willing participant in what we're about to do. So I'm just going to kind of run through some of his uh, repertoire, um, including basket muzzle training, which is just a um, safety tool for veterinary staff. So um, here we go. I'm just touching him to, to mimic um, veterinary procedures. I'll take my clicker off and do my mouth click. I'm 
cold enough for a blood draw. Looking at his teeth. Touching his nails. And then this is Ike's biggest issue is touching his ears. Let's see how he does. So he's backing up and telling me he doesn't want to do it. So I'm going to move on to something else. Touch. Let's see if he's still letting me use his eyes. And so basically this is how Ike gets examined um, from a veterinary perspective. It's every single thing we do, we click um, for that behavior to tell him, yes, you did a really good job. Um, and he gets reward for it. So let's see if we can do his other ear. Good boy. Boy. So you see how he's sticking his face in, not me putting it on him. Touch. <laughs> You're funny. Touch. No treats. Touch. Good boy. Touch. That was a good one. Touch. Good boy. Touch. Good job, buddy. for animals comes out um, in my uh, creativity with training making sure that they're okay with um, them being handled especially for veterinary procedures um, and treating their anxiety disorders and aggression because they are all God's creatures and they deserve to have humane training thank you